Hi, my name is Slightly Scruffy Tony Van Veen, CEO of Dismakers. Welcome to the sixth video in our series about music copyrights and royalties. If you haven't seen the previous videos, click the link in the description below, start with the first one, or go to any which one that you may have missed. Today, I'm gonna to be discussing a topic about which confusion reigns among artists, namely neighboring rights, and Sound Exchange, the organization that tracks and pays those royalties. In my last video, I talked about performance rights and the PROs who collect them, ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, etc. Those royalties are paid to the owners of the composition, i.e. the songwriter or publisher, when the song is publicly performed. Neighboring rights refer to the neighboring performance right on the sound recording when the recording is performed publicly. So where performance royalties are paid to songwriters and publishers by the PROs, neighboring rights royalties are paid out to the artist and to the master owner, which is usually the label, but can also be the artist. Um, around the world, neighboring rights royalties are collected by performance rights organizations when music is played on radio or performed on TV, and they're paid to rights holders as a royalty for those plays. But the U.S is a unique and different story. You see, the United States does not recognize traditional neighboring rights. U.S. broadcasters are actually exempt from paying performers and labels when their sound recordings are performed on terrestrial radio and on TV. This is because the broadcast industry has successfully lobbied that their playing your music promotes you as an artist and that therefore they should not have to pay a royalty. What's amazing is that the U.S. is one of only four countries in the world that do not pay a royalty to the sound recording owner when their music is played on radio. The other three are the democratic bastions of North Korea, Iran, and China. So in all, this is pretty unfair, right? And many music organizations, including the Rag Grammys and A2IM and others, continue to lobby to change the law. But check this out. Not only do U.S. artists and labels not get paid royalties when their music is performed in the U.S., they also don't get them if their music is performed on radio or TV in other countries, even though those countries do collect and pay royalties to sound recording owners and to artists, to the labels. Here's the thing. Because the United States does not have traditional neighboring rights, it doesn't have the reciprocal agreements in place with collection societies in other countries to exchange neighboring rights royalties owed to performers and master owners when sound recordings are broadcast. Therefore, collection societies in any other countries collect neighboring rights royalties on U.S. records getting played on their radio stations, but they withhold those payments due, that are due to U.S.-based performers and labels. Now, Millions of songs played by American artists every day go uncollected as a result. These royalties end up in what's known as a black box. And those black box royalties end up being redistributed to the members of the collecting society in the country where the U.S. artists got airplay to artists in that country based on their market share. Knowing how much U.S. music is played in every other country in the world every day, this ends up costing American artists and labels a ton of money each month. Money that is actually being collected and that they should be entitled to. Clearly, this is super unfair towards American artists. And this is all due to a weakness in U.S. copyright law. And we can thank the National Association of Broadcasters and their allies for that. Thanks a lot, guys. Now, there is a bit of good news that while the U.S. does not have a traditional collection society for neighboring rights royalties, there is an agency called Sound Exchange that collects digital radio royalties for broadcast on non-terrestrial radio. So that is satellite radio, like Sirius XM, and internet radio like Pandora, iHeartRadio, and other webcasters. Digital royalties are broken out as follows. 45% of them get paid to the featured artist, i.e. the one whose name is probably on the album cover. 
5% get paid to non-featured artists through a fund for session players, backup musicians, etc. And the remaining 50% gets paid to the owner of the recording, i.e. the artist of the label. If you're an independent artist releasing your own music, you are both the featured artist and the rights holder, and so you're entitled to 95% of the royalty. Here's how it actually works. Sound Exchange collects a statutory royalty per play from the digital broadcasters. Those royalties are they're calculated in a bunch of different ways, but they are generally in the vicinity of about two tenths of a penny per play. Some a little more, some a little less. The artist portion, which totals 50% of the total, is paid by Pandora or Sirius XM, let's say, directly to Sound Exchange. And then Sound Exchange is obligated by law to pay the featured artist part of the royalty, i.e. 45%, directly to the artist. It cannot go to your label. That's why it's critical as an artist that you register directly at soundexchange.com, including if you're on a label. Sound Exchange then pays the non-featured artist royalty, 5% of the total, to an organization like the American Federation of Musicians or SAG-AFTRA for distribution. Now, the recording owner portion, the other 50%, is a different story. Sound Exchange used to mostly collect the label royalties and pay them out, and they still do some. However, in recent years, in order to reduce their royalty burden, the big digital broadcasters have made direct royalty deals with the majors, with a bunch of independent labels, and this is important for DIY artists, with the big digital distributors. So today, the digital broadcast royalty owed to the owner of the recording is paid by, let's say, Pandora directly to your distributor. Your distributor will then pay those royalties to the owner of the recording, to you as an artist. So if your distributor has made a direct agreement with digital radio stations like Pandora, then Pandora will pay the label share or the owner's share of your digital performance royalties directly to them. I know CD Baby, for example, collects the sound recording owner royalty on behalf of its artists. If you're with a different distributor, check with them. So in summary, U.S. artists get the short end of the stick compared to artists in other countries with regard to neighboring rights royalties. However, Sound Exchange does collect them in the U.S. for satellite and digital radio broadcasts. And in order to get your artist royalties, you need to register at soundexchange.com. And in order for your sound recording owner share to get collected, you may be able to do that through your digital distributor. And that's it for today. In my next video, I'll be discussing synchronization royalties, aka sync licensing. I hope to see you there.